So we have seen a, a phenomenal growth in video. Um, Zaxxis is about a billion company revenue company by the end of the year, and uh, more than 50% of our revenues are, are already coming from video. Um, so most of our budget in, in the video domain is actually coming from our um, TV guys. So we really work closely with our um, with the TV departments in our agencies. And they basically look for incremental reach at a low cost point. So basically they would like to extend their TV campaigns into online and then they come to us and we then execute those campaigns for them. Uh, we do so by using our own DMP, which we call Turbine. Uh, and Turbine is hooked into many uh, local TV um, measurement systems, which can allow us to precisely actually measure the incremental reach, and which also allows us to precisely target those users who haven't seen the TV ads um, in, yeah, on screens, on TV screens. So tell us about the, um, the inventory on the sell side, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit how that works, who you work with, um, mm -hmm. You buy that media. Uh, what are the sources? What is the availability of inventory? Yeah. Tell us about the sell so, side. So we, we actually make a lot of upfront commitments to publishers. So we do source uh, inventory from um, premium publishers directly. We typically do not source inventory from open exchanges. Uh, for us, it's really important that we get access to really high quality premium inventory. And that's especially important for video campaigns, for branding campaigns, where uh, it's all about the audience, but also the content does matter. Uh, and therefore, we've established those relationships with the publishers uh, in all of the 40 markets where we uh, actually operate. So um, the targeting uh, is based on our own data, uh, which um, we host in our own proprietary DMP called Turbine, uh, which is now active in about 40 markets. And so basically in Turban, we have a relatively uh, good understanding about the user, about uh, the preferences, about things like um, age and gender. And that's what we use for targeting. Um, in, in many, many cases, um, the requests that we get from our um, um, TV departments is still about um, socio-demographic um, targeting. So it's really, in many cases, about age, gender, uh, and things like that. We can then uh, augment those targeting uh, criteria with all the data that we have in Turbine, whether it's now interest-based uh, um, uh, data, or uh, more interestingly, actually, uh, purchasing data. So we have also injected a lot of offline purchasing data in Turbine. And then you can basically target precisely a specific, let's say, um, uh, social demographic segment, which also is very likely to actually purchase the product, which we then advertise for. Um, in Can we spoke to Casper about uh, TV Sync, mm -hmm. uh, Zaxxis Sync. Yeah. Tell us about how that's developing, is, is, if, if you think what the opportunities are around this sort of syncing product. I mean, the second thing, I think, was one of our first uh, initiatives to go after cross-device targeting. So really, the idea is how can we um, reach the audience across any device, no matter whether it's now a laptop, a PC, or in the future, um, pr uh, a TV. Um, TV screen, right? And and so Sync was our first and, and uh, very important step in the right direction. In the meantime, we were able to roll out Sync into many, many markets. Uh, and now we are basically expanding the capabilities of Sync. Again, more devices and, and more precise targeting. Mark, there's a lot of talk about programmatic TV, addressable mm -hmm. linear TV. <coughs> it's a little bit, we're not quite there. What w could be the roadmap uh, to Zaxxis' yeah. involvement in yeah. what we would call programmatic TV that exists perhaps video on demand in the cable box, mm -hmm. uh, in the satellite yeah. box. So uh, there are the two ways that, uh, that uh, we, we are going to approach the problem. The first one is, again, it's about data. So basically, how can we actually um, think our own uh, DMP with the data that we can collect on those devices? And uh, we have made actually quite substantial progress in that area. Uh, there are many, many different ways, but I do think we have made really good, pro uh, good, good progress. The second one is actually then getting access to the media. Um, so there are basically two, two steps. The first one is basically that you, you do the connection on the, t uh, on the data front, but then you still um, optimize on the media front more manually. And then the second step is also to optimize the actually delivery of the, the ads uh, in programmatic TV. But that's the second step. Again, first step is data, and the second step is then the media uh, connectivity. 
What's the roadmap for that over the next 12 months? <coughs> I do think that we will have the first uh, campaigns by the beginning of next year. Yeah. So again, we have made substantial progress this year, and I think we should be ready by the, the beginning of next year. Mark, we're getting ready for De Mexico. Sure. So you've been there a number of years. Tell us about the event and what you hope uh, <coughs> to accomplish, what Zaxis hopes to accomplish at De Mexico. Um, De Mexico is, as always, a really intense two days with many, 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 many meetings. Um, we typically focus on a lot of meetings with publishers. Uh, discuss what we would like to do together in 2016, which again is really important because we have those uh, really close relationships and we basically discuss what can we do together in a proprietary form. And at the same time, we also have a lot of conversations with advertisers to um, yeah, excite them about the products that we have to offer. Um, um, I do think this, this year uh, we will definitely talk a lot about uh, programmatic video for sure. Um, I also do think that a lot of conversations are about wallet gardens. Um, and how we can basically provide an alternative to the wallet gardens that uh, uh, of Facebook or Google is right now trying to establish. Uh, so I do think that we find really, really uh, uh, a lot of open ears on the publisher side, but also on the advertiser side. Um, and uh, I'm sure that we will see good traction uh, at the Mexico. And at the same time, as a German who lives now in New York for so many years, it's, uh, it's always kind of homecoming for me. It's good to see uh, good old friends and just stay connected to these guys. And Mark, one follow-up to your statement about the wall gardens. Um, <coughs> what's the issue with the wall gardens? Is it become a problem? Is there interoperability? Are brands concerned about it? Is That's it, exactly is there, the what, What's going on? Basically, what's going on with the wall gardens is that um, Basically, you have to run in that wallet garden, and you can only apply media and data within that wallet garden. Which means is you can't do targeting across those wallet gardens. You can't do analytics across those tar uh, wallet gardens. You can't do all of that. What actually programmatic buying is all about, right? It's really about how can you apply your own assets across all the different outlets out there, and that's basically what the wallet gardens actually. Yeah, don't allow you to do, and you could even go a step further and say uh, those wallet gardens make audience planning, audience buying actually even less efficient. Uh, so remember in the old days, uh, as an agency, you, you just send out an I.O. Right, to those different wallet gardens, and then you basically optimize manually in the back end. In the future, you have to log into all those different systems, which is a lot of work. And, and therefore, although we all talk about programmatic, it's becoming actually less efficient and less effective. Uh, and that's certainly one area where we can help uh, as we have access to so many, many different media providers and we have a unifying data platform, which it allows us to actually do what programmatic is at the end really about, which is really r uh, reaching all those audiences across all those kind of um, yeah, media providers, no matter on which device they are based on the same data assets that you, that you can use. So I do think that that's a great kind of opportunity for Sackers to grow going forward. Uh, and I think at the same time, it's a challenge for the agency to handle um, those wallet guns going forward in a really efficient and effective way.